everyone, welcome to this Viz demo on how to build rounded bar charts. I'm Lou Stanky, I'm a Tableau Zen Master, and I help co-run Data Coach. It's a premium offering for training on Tableau, Power BI, Altrix, data literacy, and many tools to come. But in this video, in this build, this Viz, we are going to look at gradient bar charts. Seems like a simple topic, and it ended up taking me down a rabbit hole. So what I have on my screen right now, standard bar chart. If you've been following the videos, we've been doing bar charts all week. And I have here a horizontal bar chart for subcategory and just showing sales. And I didn't put the dollar signs on it because, uh, as we discussed, I didn't want to highlight that it's a, a sales value, rather just an, any numeric value. And right now, sorted alphabetically, just gonna leave it like this. And instead of doing a standard chart like this, just a standard bar, what I wanna do is I wanna add a little bit of gradient to it. And here's one option. I could do like rounded bars, and then with the bars, let's call out the values and we'll add like color on the end. Or if it's I don't want rounded, I can still do that. And the trick of all this is that I don't need to do any additional tricks with my data. I just need to nail down my table calculations and that's what we're gonna do here in this video. So why don't we start with the easy one? The easy one is actually the grading bar chart. What I'll start with is just finding subcategory. So I'll take subcategory, place it out on my rows. Let's go ahead and make that fit the entire view. From there, we're gonna go find measure names. We're going to take measure names, put that out on color, measure values out on columns. We're going to change our mark type here to a line, by the way. And don't worry about all these extra values here in my measures values card. We're going to change that in a second. But what I want to do is I want to duplicate my measure names path here and place that on path. So now we've got the path running within every subcategory. Next step. We're just gonna do an ad hoc calculation down below here in measure values. Double click, I'm gonna type min 0, 0.0. And then I'm gonna get rid of everything but sales. So I'm just gonna do this the hard way, click and drag values out one at a time. We get rid of all of those values. And that's it, that's our first way of doing this. We're just creating these bar charts. If you want to add labels, by the way, the easiest way to add this label, just click on label, show marks, and they show up on both sides. If you don't want the, the dots for both, you can just click on color and then change your marker type and it gets rid of those big markers showing up. One nice little trick that I like to add to this is show the percent of the total to go with this. And the way that I can add a percent, show the total, right? The bar, sort of like have a bar sitting within a bar, sort of a proportional brush, is I think what they call it in Tableau. And the way we're going to add this is, again, we're just going to double click, and this time we'll type window, min, uh, sorry, window max of sum of sales. Window max sum of sales. Very interesting outcome here. Let's turn off our label. Don't need that anymore. I've got some very cool color coming through, by the way. But we're going to move this window some value or max up to the top. And let's put zero next. And uh, yeah, we'll have to change these colors too, as fun as they are. We want to have this window sum be a gray and our min as well be a gray. And then we'll see that gradient go up to the total here. And you'll see that my phones, which is my highest possible value, goes all the way to the top, and chairs gets close, but it's not quite all the way, and we see that happening as well. So this is how I do a gradient percent of total. And just to add in to this, if you didn't want to do a gradient, I could, once again, I'm just gonna type min zero in here. Nice little you know, last trick on this one. I'm gonna place, so we have max, window max, and then the min zero, and another min zero, and then some of sales. And I can change this second min zero. I can 
match it with the red here. And what I'll do is I'll get bar over bar to go with it. Nice little trick. Again, this one isn't gradient, but I could uh, change this to easily make it a gradient to go with it. So there's your gradient to go with it. And it's have it be a percent of the total, sort of like a thermometer, if you will, to show that total. Now those are the rounded bar charts and I just gave you like three different versions for it. The last way we're going to do this in a fun way is to do this with a bar chart but not have the rounded ends on it. And creating those rounded ends isn't difficult per se, it just takes a little calculation work. So that usually is what makes it difficult. But let's just pretend uh, we can just walk through it and I'll show you how to do it. We'll start out very simply, subcategory onto our rows. This time we are going to first just get that, that sum, that total value, that window max value, but we're gonna get the window max value. Oh, I've jumped ahead here. Let's just take some level of granularity underneath subcategory that we know exists. What do we know that exists? Order ID, I'm just gonna click and drag order ID out into detail here and then my columns, I'm going to do some of sales just to start. And we can see the little chunks that are breaking out the percent of the total here. So we know there's a lot of sort of orders that make up the total. There's some big, bigger ones than others. We're not going to worry about that. I could use that potentially. I think an easiest way to work that out, but have it, it, it wouldn't be consistent in color, is that I could just take sales and bring this out and just do a running sum of the sum of sales. Oops, let's try that again. Running sum, sum of sales. So I just did an ad hoc calculations. And I could have put this on to color, but I'd have to do some sorting to go with it. And let's change our level of detail too. And I need to actually flip this and say, for every subcategory, give me the running sum of total. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but if you look really carefully at copiers, it's just a little staggery because the sizes vary from order to order and it's not consistent. If you are, you know, but if this gets you far enough, you could say this is good enough. But we're going to say, you know what, we can make it a little bit better. Let's make it a little bit better by double clicking on columns here on the sum of sales, and we're going to change this to a window sum. So window sum of sales that sort of changes my values just ever so slightly. I'm gonna get rid of this color too. And I'm gonna change my mark type just so that we can see it as a circle. And what I want these circles to be is all on the same point. And we'll do that by editing this table calculation and once again, changing our order. We wanna say for every subcategory, give me the window sum. And that's what we'll get here. All these mar marks are now overlapping on top of each other. We'll just take window sum of sum of sales and click and drag it over onto our data pane and save it off. We'll use it in a little bit here. In fact, we can go find it. I'm just gonna right click and rename it quick. Let's just call it sales window. So sales window sum, a very important name that we're gonna use. Now let's, we're gonna get rid of this value up here. And I wanna just type index. And index is just gonna create a point for every single order and you can see them count up by ones. So for every order ID, they're counting up. And if I divide this value by the size function, so divide this by size, we'll now see it separates separates it out as a percent of the total, each order just being not necessarily the percent total sales, but just one for each order, getting us to 100%, as you see down here. Copiers, a lot less orders, so you see equal spacing. They're all equally spaced, but big, larger space between it. Versus paper, there's almost no space between them. Practically continuous, because there's so many paper orders. Now we can take this value that we just put up here, we can wrap this in parentheses, and then we can multiply this by our sales window sum calculation. When we do this and hit enter, 
we have to just do a little bit of table calculation editing. We want to keep this as is, same for, so for sales for every subcategory. Let's check every order ID. And then for index and size, we're going to leave as is, as you see here. And that's indeed, we have now equal spacing. We're going to change our mark type now from circle to Gantt bar. And you can almost see how this is going to come together. Nice equally spaced points that we can fill in with the gradient color. The way we're going to fill in that gradient color is we're just going to go get this window sum of here, double click, paste it in, divide by size. So now we're dividing by size. And while we're at it, we're going to put a negative sign in front of all of this. This is just going to be one. It's essentially the, the equivalent of whatever the length that it's supposed to be. But if we place this on size, it doesn't work right away because we need to edit our table calculation. Once again, let's just make sure that we are doing our window sum for every subcategory. So we're unchecking subcategory. And then our negative value is for, for every order ID. And this gives us the following result, not at all what I was anticipating. So let's uh, double check where I made a mistake. Uh, the borrowers are the wrong size. So let's take a look at where I messed this up. And, oh, of course, for every subcategory, and then this is the wrong check. It should be checked for every order ID. There we go, perfect. A little bit of a mistake, but we got it worked out. And now the last little step is we can take index size, the same value we have in columns, click and drag that onto color. When we do that, we get gradient color and it looks very consistent. It, unlike uh, before where it was a little bit more chunky, it's gonna be perfectly spaced. If you wanna add the labels at the end, adding the labels is pretty easy to do, it's not not perfect, but we can just double click and say if our index is equal to the size, which this, the index is you know counting up for one and size is essentially the total number we have here. So if it's the last value, then let's do window sum of sales and hit enter, click and drag that up on the label. And we just have to edit our table calculation that goes with it. So clicking on our text, editing our table calculation, and changing our order here. And that will give us the exact values that we're looking for. And then it's a matter of you've just got to pick your gradient that you want to work with. So if you want to work with something like the gold purple diverging, you can hit that and you can get that color to show up no problem. Or if you want to work with something like the purples, I can hit OK, and once again, it changes those gradients, no problem. This one definitely takes a little bit more work. So yeah, that's our video here. Thanks again for tuning in to our Build This Viz tutorial video. If you found an ounce of value in this video, be sure to throw us a like. Uh, it'll help support our work. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe because every new video that comes out every day, will nearly every day we'll have one out it'll help you learn it'll go right to your inbox and you can check it out and lastly if you're eager to level up your tableau skills and impress your future employers be sure to check out datacoach datacoach.com check out the link in our description and you'll score a 50 percent off discount for our new subscriptions it's only four days left in our launch deal so be sure to act fast that said thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one